Hey guys, it's happening again. I'm going away this weekend. It's two days to go and I need a dress. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm going away on Friday once again. I am going to Slovenia, out of all places, for a bachelorette weekend slash hen party. And I'm in the mood for making something fun, easy to wear, comfortable, colorful, that I could either wear to the pool or to the city tour that I think we've booked. I'm gonna make a cute little twin set and I'm gonna show you exactly how I make it so you can recreate it at home. I'm currently obsessed with these crinkle check, actually they're sweatpants I would say, like wide leg trousers that I bought from H&M a couple weeks ago when I went to Hamburg because I I thought they were perfect plain trousers and they are but I'm obsessed with them I want to have more of them so I bought this beautiful burnt orange crinkle polyester which is the exact same fabric that my trousers are in but a more fun color so I'm thinking of making a wide-legged trouser that is gonna be super comfortable and a cute bando tie ruched top so it's not gonna have any sleeves but it's gonna have a cute little ruching detail on the side it's gonna be extremely beginner friendly so if you're new to sewing and you want to make something fun for summer this is for you let's start with the pattern the things that you'll need is some sort of ruler if you have a pattern master great if you just have a straight ruler you can do with that as well you will need a sharpie you will need a tape measure and you'll need some paper scissors so let's go I'm gonna start out with the bandeau top because that's the easiest to make. So if you sit up straight or stand up straight and you take your tape measure, simply wrap it around your bust, under your arms, just above your bust, where you would want the bandeau to start and have a look at what the circumference is. So keep that measurement in mind. So now we're gonna make a square that is exactly half of the circumference plus five centimeters of ease. In terms of length, because we're gonna have a ruching detail, we're gonna make it longer than we think that we need it. So if I put my tape measure on my torso just about where I want the bandeau to start, and I hold it down to my belly button, that's about 30 centimeters for me. I'm gonna add some extra, I'm gonna add 10 centimeters more, so 40 centimeters, because the ruching is gonna take it up and we need a little bit of extra length to actually have the ruching have an effect. So that means we're now gonna create a square that is half the circumference of our bust and the length that we just assessed. So I'm just gonna start somewhere here on my paper. I'm just gonna create a perpendicular line to the side of my piece of paper. So like I said, half of our bust circumference. So for me, that would be 45 plus four centimeters of ease. That would be 49. 49 it is. And now, we are going down from here again perpendicular to that first line and we want this to be 40 centimeters long as we've assessed we need to add some extra for the ruching to have an effect i'm gonna go for 42 even just because and that's already it that's the rectangle that we need for the top front and back so i'm gonna cut that out you could of course do this directly on your fabric to save some paper, which is what I would have done if I wouldn't have shown you how to do it. For demonstration purposes, it's easier for me to do it on paper. Now let's get to the trousers. When measuring your trousers, you're gonna take your tape measure and you're gonna just assess whereabouts you want your trousers to start. So for me, they're definitely gonna be high-waisted. So I want to go for 112 in length because that's it. that is exactly where they would hit the floor. The other measurements you need is definitely your waist. So at the point where you want your waist to hit, take a tape measure and assess your waist circumference. And then the same thing applies to your hip circumference at the widest part of your hips. Make sure you hit the apex of your butt, which is just where it protrudes at the most. Same from the front, where is the widest part of your hips. Go there and assess how much you need. So keep those three measurements in mind. Waist, hip and length. All right, now we're gonna make the trousers. The first thing we're gonna do is to create a perpendicular line to the edge of our piece of paper, because this is where we're gonna start out. Just do it so it goes from one edge of your piece of paper to the other edge, like this. This is our hip line. Now, the hip line and the waistline are usually between 20 and 24 centimeters apart. So if you, Again, take your tape measure, could have done that before, and go from your waist down to where about you measured the widest part of your hips. For me, that's quite long because I'm a tall person. Take that and mark it up from your first line. So up like this. Make a mark and create another line. That is your waistline. 
Okay, now let's think again about your hip circumference. For me, that's 108 centimeters. I half that because we are now creating the pattern on the halves so on half of our body is represented in the pattern. So 108 by two is 54, if I am correct. So I'm taking my tape measure, I'm placing it on my hip line, I'm finding the 54 point. Then I need to think about how comfortable do I want my trousers to be? How much ease am I gonna add? We also need to think about the fact that we need some fabric to go into our crotch area. So when we think about the circumference of our thigh, the part that is going inwards towards your crotch isn't really rep represented in the circumference of your hip. So we're gonna add a good 10 centimeters of ease. I'm gonna do 11 even, so I'm landing on a nice number. So I'm measuring 65 centimeters over, and this is gonna be the total width of this pattern piece. So once I have that, I can go ahead and create a line that is parallel to the edges of our piece of paper and perpendicular to my hip and waistline. So I'm gonna take this line as far down as I can, ideally the length of my trousers. So for me, that's 110. So waistline, hip line, length of my trousers. The way we think about this square now is that this here is our center front and this is our center back. How do we divvy up the width of this towards the front and the back? Place your tape measure once more and find the midpoint between front and back. Make a little mark. So that would be your inner leg seam. From that midpoint, measure four centimeters towards the front and six centimeters towards the back. Four and six is 10 centimeters, which is the ease that we added before. We want more ease in the back and a little bit less ease in the front. This ease is basically what is gonna connect the front and the back towards each other in the crotch area. And because our bums are protruding out, we need more, a longer piece there than in the front. If that makes sense. I hope it does. What I want to do to save myself a seam is disregard the inner leg seam. So we just don't have to sew it. This is going to make a little bit more sense once I show you how to sew the trousers together. The other thing that we need to consider is the total crotch length. So we take our tape measure and we do this. Take it through your legs and then start to measure from your belly button up to your back where you want the trousers to hit. So it's going in between your legs and then see how long this is. That is the total crotch length. For me, that is very long because I'm a tall person. If you're a short person, then it might not be this long. Okay, what we're gonna do now is from these markings that we've made, we're gonna make a guideline up towards our waist. In the back, I'm gonna go up a little bit because I already know that I need this. And then in the front, I'm just going right to my waistline like this. Since these are now our side seams, side seam, side seam, as they will connect together. This is our center back and this is our center front. We don't really need to do a waist calculation because we need the waist to be a little bit wider. So we can just slip into it with our elastic waistband. We're not gonna have a fitted trouser. This is gonna be a very comfortable sweatpants-esque trouser with a elastic waistband. So at the moment, our waist is 55 centimeters, which might be quite too big for us. We consider that my waist, for example, is 70. Two. If I do 55 on half, that then would be 110 in the waist, which is a little bit much. So what we're gonna do is we'll take in the waist by four centimeters each. So I'm just measuring that inwards. And now what I can do, if you have a curved ruler, you can place it and start considering how you want your crotch curve to be. So we're gonna extend the front by three centimeters and we're gonna extend the back by five centimeters. We need a higher back than we need a front. And now what we need to do is we need to measure the curve. Is this close to what we measured when we, when we measured our crotch? If you're happy, you can leave it. If you're not happy, you have to extend it a little bit more. Okay, so you can see now that we've gone quite a bit over our hip line. So what we need to do is we need to extend the side seam to connect with the center back. I'm doing this in a bit of an angle here because I just know that trouser patterns are like this. The center back needs to be higher than the side seam. And in the front, we can just go ahead and find a nice straight line with a tiny bit of a curve. So we have the side seam meeting in a perpendicular angle here. Am I happy with this? What I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna add just a little bit more ease in my center back side seam. So I'm gonna add four centimeters here. And I'm gonna connect these with my waist like this. So to proof check if it's eventually going to fit you for sure, please go ahead and check your waist. 
So if I measure the center back waist, which is 20, and the center front waist, and I double them up, I end up with 86 centimeters. So that is wider than what I would actually need in my waist. But since we're doing an elastic waistband, it does need to be wider so we can slip into it um, and our hips will go through it. And then the same thing applies to the hip line. Go ahead and measure that. Take that total measurement and wrap it around the widest point of your thigh. It needs to be a little bit wider, a little bit looser. So you're gonna, you know it's gonna fit around it and it's gonna be comfortable. And that is that. Now let me cut it out and show you what the pieces look like. Okay, we have a double layer of fabric here. And now I'm gonna place this trouser pattern on top of it, like this. And that's that. Now we're gonna cut it. Okay, so we have our trousers cut and we have our top cut and I really like the fact that the crinkle coat goes vertically on the trousers and horizontally on the top. I think that could look cute. I also cut a few strips which I'm going to need for the ruching detail on the side seams of the top. So now let's put all of this together. You can see that I immediately clamped together the seams that I need to sew before I even lifted the pieces from the ground. That's just going to speed up the process for me. The first thing I'll do is sew the inner crotch seam on my serger. Once the crotch seam is sewn, we can open up the back as well as the front. We need to separate the legs so we can place the back and front right sides touching like this. It is again time to pin everything together along the side seams. Okay, now that I've pinned the sides together, I can also serge these. Okay, we're almost done with the trousers, which is the beauty of this make. It's so simple. Now I'm grabbing my waistband elastic that I have right here, and I measure 71 centimeters plus four centimeters overlap so I can sew the waistband together because this is my waist circumference. And then I cut here. Now I go ahead and overlap the elastic by four centimeters. And now I'm gonna sew a square with an X in the middle to secure it. That's that, secure as can be. And now I can go ahead and place the center front point of my elastic with the center front point of my trousers. Same with the sides. And you can see I'm placing it on the inside. You could do it also on the outside. It's really up to you because we're gonna fold this over eventually, so the waistband is gonna be hidden away. So what happens is you can see there is much more ease in the trouser than in the actual elastic. When I now take this to my serger, I'm gonna pull the elastic, so the trouser and the elastic match up like this. So it's a pulling and sewing action to secure the waistband in place. there we have it now the elastic is sewn onto the trousers like this and then we can simply fold it over once more like that to hide it away and what we're then gonna do we stitch in the ditch to tuck the elastic down permanently okay trousers are done let's continue with the top as you know I've already clasped the sides together we have a horizontal stripe here which means it's not as stretchy towards the sides which is why I added some ease and it's much more stretchy vertically so what I'm gonna do now is I'll take this to my normal sewing machine and I'm gonna sew two centimeters in from the sides I'm gonna use a stitch length of three once the sides are sewn together we can open up the top open up the seam allowance, place it into the sewing machine like this, and sew one centimeter from our original seam towards each side. Alrighty, this is how I want the side to turn out. You can see the ruching detail in the side seam, and I'm gonna show you how I did that. 
The first thing we need is a strip of fabric that is quite long enough so it can go through the tunnels and still be long enough so we have some of it hanging down on the sides. So I'm taking that and I'm folding it over once and then I'm sewing down the length of it to create a little string. Once this is done, I'm grabbing a simple hand needle with a piece of thread through it that is double, that is doubled, and I'm making a knot at the end. I'm now going through the seam allowance that I gave myself here on the side of the string, and then I'm going into my string eye of the needle first. And this is so that I can overturn the string and have a clean finish on the outside. Eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed this outfit already in my last video because I actually did a bit of a switcheroo. I should have posted this before the last one, but for some reason I didn't. So you might have seen this fit already in last week's video where I was actually wearing it because it is so comfortable. It is great. I love these trousers and I really, really want to make them in another color, but it's a bit hard to find the right fabric. But it's a good sign that I am very happy with my make and that I think it is successful. Also, here are a few pictures of when I wore the trousers out on the actual rooftop pool of our actual hotel in Slovenia. So you guys know I'm not just making up these stories, I'm actually making these things for special occasions or for getaways, weekend getaways and things like that. So yeah, that was fun and they were perfect for the pool actually. I can really see myself wearing them this summer when hopefully maybe I can go on a summer holiday, but TBC. Also, elephant in the room, I actually lost some footage towards the end of the video. Don't quite know how that happened, but you might have noticed that I didn't show you exactly how I completed the top. However, it works the exact same way as with the trousers. The top also has this elastic here that I attached the exact same way as I did with the trousers. And I eventually inserted the strings that I made into these two tunnels that we created when we sewed one centimeter on each side of the side seam. So this is the result. So you could make this longer if you want it, but I really like this half moon shape that it's giving. And that's that. Next week, I'm finally gonna share with you what my wedding guest outfit looks like that I teasered quite a while ago. It took me a while to actually make it, but I'm now finally finished with the pattern. I'm now finally finished with the dress. So next week, you're gonna see that. That video is also going to kick off a little series that I'm probably gonna start. That happened a bit on an accident, but I'm gonna start a little series on making occasion dresses because I didn't stop at a wedding guest dress that I'm gonna show you next week. There's a couple of more coming. So if you're up for that kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when stuff drops and that's it thank you so much for watching see you next time it really was such a bad plan, cause I really